Hello, YouTube family. Welcome back if you're returning. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want you all to know how much I appreciate you. I hope you will all consider giving me a big thumbs up for this video. And if this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button as well as that little bell to notify you every single time I upload a video. Now today's video is two projects that are absolutely gorgeous. I know with Christmas right around the corner, we are all itching to decorate our homes with high end decor on a Dollar Tree budget. And these two projects hit that exact mark. They are Dollar Tree projects, but they look like they could have came from a high-end decor store or a big department store, especially the second one. So stick around to the end. I promise you will not be disappointed. To start this project, you're going to need one of those paintable stand-up picture frames from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, and I'm painting mine in Waverly's Chalk Paint in Ink. These make wonderful stands. If you ever have signs or anything that you want to stand up on their own, and you don't want to put them on a wreath or anything, you can use these stands for that. They hold them up fabulously. This is what's going to hold our little gnome up. This little Santa head, all I want from him is his nose right now. I'm gonna steal his nose and then put him aside to save for another project. And I'm just taking some pink mixed with white to give a little fleshy color nose, a little pink nose. And I'm just painting that little nose and I'm gonna set that aside for later. And then I'm taking my ho 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 Santa head here and I'm turning him over. He's gonna be the head of our gnome and we're just going to fill in that little hole with some spackle that way it doesn't show when we stand our little Santa up and I wanted a black beard now my fall gnome has a white curly beard but for this gnome my Christmas gnome I'm going to give him a black or a salt and pepper colored beard let's say he's uh a uh, 40 year old gnome or a, a gnome in his 40s and he's his little black beard is starting to go white or to gray. So we're gonna give him a salt and pepper effect. But first we wanna give him a good coat of the Waverly's chalk paint in ink or any black chalk paint. And we want it to go all the way up to the brim of his hat because gnomes usually don't show their faces. We just usually see their little noses. And I've just been crushing on gnomes this year. I, I haven't always been a big fan, but this year I just think they're adorable. So I'm taking one of those little stiff brushes you get at the Dollar Tree and I'm using Waverly's chalk paint in cashew. And I'm just dry brushing some streaks onto his beard. And this gives the effect of hair. It gives it a textured effect. So you can tell that it's a beard on my little gnome. He's so cute. I just love this little project. Now we're just gonna take the feet from this Santa. We're stealing a little from each Santa. And we're gonna paint his legs in gray just to define his legs from his boots. You won't see much of his, the gray or I don't even know if you'll see any of the gray. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember if you see any of the gray, but I don't think so. So I just was defining the difference between his legs and his boots. So that's just some Waverly chalk paint and ink mixed with some of the cashew to give the gray effect. And then we're gonna paint his boots all black. Now for the top of his boots, I wanted to give it a, a, like a furry effect or the effect of a cozy boot, just kind of like, kind of like the Santa boots. And I'm just gonna take one of those detailing 
gloss from the automotive section and I am going to give it a finished edge there. That's why you see me curl it over like that because we don't want the cut end of that fabric to show. And I cut up the middle there so we're going to give the definition of two boots instead of just one all the way across. And you just want to glue each one of those sides all the way around and wrap that material around to the back of your sign. That way it gives it a complete finished look and look at how cute it tops those boots off. <laughs> I absolutely love the effect that it gives. It's just adorable. And then you just wrap that around to the back and glue it to the back side and you've got yourself some gnome boots. And because I want the back of my project to look finished, I'm taking some scrap wrapping paper. This is the brown wrapping paper you find in the packaging section of the Dollar Tree. And I'm just tracing around my boots there. And I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to take some spray adhesive and I am going to glue it to the back of my boots. Now, the I don't know about any of you, but the Dollar Tree spray adhesive just doesn't work for me. I used it once before and it was a fail. And right here, I'm spraying it on and it's a fail. I don't know if it's because that glitter is on there or if it's just a fail in general. You guys leave me in the comments and let me know if you have problems with that spray adhesive as well. And because it didn't stick, I'm going to go ahead and take some hot glue and just finish off the edges there. I've seen some of the girls just glue on their paper on the back of their projects with hot glue and it works just fine. They don't have any problems with it and I might start doing that. So because I didn't cut it exact and I didn't want that brown paper to show on the other side, on the finished side, I'm just taking some sandpaper and I'm sanding off the edges just to give it that perfect fit. Now I want my gnome to have some little mitten hands. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that foam poster board that I had on hand. It's just a scrap piece you see there from a different project. And I'm drawing me some little mittens. Aren't they cute? I'm just going to take my little craft knife and cut them out until I get the shape. And I'm gonna do two of these because he's gonna need a mitten for each side. And with the craft knife, I never get a perfect cut. So I just take the scissors and trim it up until I get it the way I want it. Now I'm just going to take that Dollar Tree detailing cloth, which I absolutely love. And you just need one cloth for this project and you're gonna have some left over too. It does so much. And you're just going to cut out enough to cover those little hands with. And then I have now switched to my Elmer's spray adhesive. I've given up on the Dollar Tree spray adhesive at this point, and I'm just gonna figure out where I want it on the cloth, and I'm just gonna tack it down, spray some more, and wrap it all the way around. And once I get it wrapped, I'm gonna take my scissors, and I'm just gonna trim it up so that it has that mitten shape that I'm looking for. And there you have my little mitten. And we're gonna set those aside to finish his hat. And this is just a holiday placemat that I've had for years and years and years. And I don't know what happened to the rest of the set, but I'm glad that I kept this one because I thought it was beautiful fabric and I wanted to use it to cover my Christmas gnome's hat. Now, you can use anything you want for this. You can use scrapbook paper for my Fall gnome, I used a scarf from the Dollar Tree, um, one of their fall scarves. And so you just turn it over and you trace right along the edge and make sure you get all those little curves in that adorable hat that he has. 
And I'm using a paint pen so it'll show up on my uh, material there. And then you just go along and you cut it out. Now, like I said, you can use scrapbook paper, you could use wrapping paper, you could use scarves, or maybe just some material. I never throw any of my old clothes away. I, well, sometimes I give them away, but I, if I really like the material on a piece of clothing that I can't wear anymore, I will cut it up and use for my crafts. And so that's an idea. You can just use anything you want. And I just take my Elmer's spray adhesive again, and I place that hat down. I use the Elmer's spray adhesive that is readjustable, the kind you can peel up, and it's really forgiving because I rarely get it perfect on the first time try. But I am a bit of a perfectionist, so I will go back in and do it over and over and over until I get it the way I want it. And you just make sure that sticks down all the way and then we're going to go ahead and trim that out. I didn't like the cut edge of the material and so I wanted to put something around the edge just to kind of give it a finished look but because he is a gnome and gnomes live in the forest in my imagination they do anyway <laughs> and to me they're always just a little bit rustic. I never see a gnome that's dressed up all fancy to the nines and so I'm giving him a little bit, a little bit of a rustic air with this jute twine that I bought from the Dollar Tree Automotive section. And I'm just gonna put it all the way around the hat with some hot glue. And when we get to the brim, we're gonna do something different. So you just cut that off. And now we are going to take that same detailing cloth that we've been using on his boots in his hand and we're gonna cut a strip off so that we can use this for the brim of his hat. So here's where you wanna make sure that you tuck in the edges when you're hot gluing that strip of material down because we want it to look as if it has been sewn onto the hat with a seam so you don't get the cut edge of the material, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So make sure that when you're gluing that down, you tuck it under both on the top and the bottom. And I just went all the way around my little gnome head. You don't have to do this. You could do like we did with the boots, but I don't know why I did this. I just, it was long. And so I just thought I would wrap it all the way around. And so we just hot glued that sucker all the way around his head and stuck it down. So like I said, you don't have to do this. It's just something that I did. So for the top of his hat, gnomes usually have a little pom-pom or tassel or something on the top of their hat, but I didn't have anything that was gonna match this little Christmas hat on hand, but I did have that detailing cloth. I love that thing. So I just decided to take a little circle of it and just adhere it to the top of his hat and give him that little ball effect as if he had a white, little pom-pom on the top there. And that was it for his little hat. I think it turned out so cute. Now I'm going to make the back of this head finish just like I did with his legs. So I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm just gonna trace it out on that scrap paper. And as you can tell from the paper that I'm cutting, it is not a new roll of paper. It is a paper that I had used for crafting to put on my table to craft on top of before. And so I'm just, instead of throwing it away, I hardly ever throw it away unless it's really dirty. I will keep those in a big bag and use it for fillers and things like that. Uh, I just like to reuse and not waste a lot of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and use my spray adhesive, but I wished I would have hot glued it on. And here's why you're going to see why in a minute, because when you put spray adhesive on, if you put too much, it'll give a stain effect and 
you're going to see when I go to spray where the material is, where the detail telling cloth is, and where the sticker face is on the Santa side, the spray adhesive doesn't want to stick real well, so I add more. <laughs> and when I add more, it all kind of soaks up and then it soaks up into the paper as you just saw right there. And so if I had used the hot glue, which is what I'm doing now because it was failing on me, the spray adhesive, I would not have had that staining effect, which to still there, even though the project is dry, it still gives it that stain effect. And I'm just sanding the edges where it might have overlapped and shown on the other side of the finished project. Then I'm going to go ahead and attach his limbs. I attached his legs with hot glue and I'm attaching his little mittens with hot glue. And you want to just leave a little bit of it just peeking out on the other side. We just want to look like his little hands are peeking out below his beard there. Let's turn him over. He looks so good. That's the finished backside there. <laughs> I'm showing you his little backside. Oh, but here we go. We're just gonna place his nose, the nose that we painted and set aside earlier. We're just gonna place it right under his hat there. And you can see he's turning out so adorable. And because we want his shoes to look like shiny little black shoes, we're gonna give him some shine spots. And we're going to define the back of his shoes so we know where the right is and the left is, or the right is from the left. So we're just giving him some little definition. Now we're going to put a little shine spot on his nose as if he's got a cold little shiny nose. This is a spray or a pick that I got from the Dollar General. And I'm just going to use a little bit of it to adorn his hat. This is the lamb's ear that we all use from Walmart. And I'm just using a couple leaves. And we're just going to give him a little sprig of holiday cheer, almost to match the holly that's on his hat is kind of what I'm going for. So just give him three little berries and voila, there he is. I just glued their stands on with hot glue, but there's my fall gnome and he's a little bit different, but he turned out so cute as well. There's the scarf that I used for his hat. And then I just used some Dollar Tree yarn for the pom-pom on the top and to outline his hat in. And I just, I think they're so adorable. I am so in love with these gnomes and I think they would make great gifts. This is what I call my Christmas tree diorama. And I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. To start with, you're gonna need two of those succulent plants, the potted ones, because you're not gonna use the succulents. You're gonna take those out and save them for another project, but you are gonna use the pots. This is what is going to be the trunk of my tree. You wanna take off those stickers. And I found the best way to do that is with the heat gun. And once you heat them up, they come right off because they can be really stubborn sometimes if you don't heat up that glue on them. I'm just using my E6000 and my hot glue gun to give it that instant hold and permanent hold. And I know you guys have seen this effect before. If you haven't, that's why we use the two different glues is because the hot glue gives it the permanent hold and the E, I'm sorry, the E6000 gives it the permanent hold and the glue gun gives it the instant hold. And I'm just cleaning up the edges where some of the glue seeped out. Now I'm taking the Waverly's chalk paint and truffle and I'm painting my trunk. This was kind of, uh, it was kind of a pain guys. So I think it's better if you spray paint this, honestly, just get some brown paint or white paint. You can even paint it white if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. I just was wanted the brown effect, but I didn't like the brown of the pots. And I kind of wanted to disguise that seam. So that's why I went with the chalk paint. But because the surface was so slick, it took me several coats to cover up 
all of that. It just kept wanting to slide right off of that slick surface. But if you guys have some spray paint, then I recommend just taking it outside and spraying it a couple of times and it would be much, much easier. Now you're gonna take five of those triangle trays from the Dollar Tree and peel those stickers off and prep them. Right here, I'm showing you guys, <laughs> the bottom of the triangle is smaller than the sides of the triangle. And you wanna find the bottom of, your, of each of your triangles. You wanna know where that bottom is because when you start stacking them together, you're gonna to want to stagger them. So you're gonna to wanna to know where the shorter end is versus the taller end. That way you can kind of even out your ledges. What you wanna get is an effect where all of those ledges could be used possibly to set something on an ornament, a tree, a little person from the holiday village at the Dollar Tree. I mean, the sky's the limit. Your imagination is the only limit you have here because this turned out so amazing. Once you decide where you wanna put your triangles, then you go start stacking them together and you use both glues for that permanent and instant hold. And then you take the top triangle and you place that standing straight up. You don't wanna lie that down. Now you could have turned it the other way over and had the, uh, the tray part sticking up because then you could plant flowers or do whatever you want in those trays but i wanted it to look like a ledge so i flipped the trays over until i got to that top tray and now i'm just going to stand it straight up to give me the point of the top of my christmas tree and you're going to see what i do with the inside of that tray it turns out so so cute i'm absolutely in love with this project i say that about a lot of my projects but <laughs> this one is better than i could even imagine so this is one of those star those wooden star ornaments that are so high-end looking to me i don't know about you guys but those things are amazing they look like they're really high end. And I'm taking the caulk that I'm using for this entire project and I'm just filling in that hole at the top of the star so you don't see it when we paint the star. Now, I didn't get the footage of painting, or I'm sorry, gluing the star on top of my project because I hadn't readjusted my camera yet. But later you will see I did glue that with the E6000 and the hot glue to the top of that tree that stands straight up. And then later I'm gonna put some caulking around it for that snowy effect, and that's gonna reinforce that hold. And as you saw, I showed you, this is the Waverly Chalk Paint in white, and I'm just gonna paint the entire tree. Now you could do this before you glued them together, or you could do it the way I did it. It's entirely up to you, whatever's easier for you. And you just want to paint it including that star now you see that i went ahead and i had glued the star on the top and i'm taking some waverly's chalk paint and crimson and i'm painting my star a red dry brush effect now why red because i want this to be in my candy cane themed room i in my dining room is where I put my candy cane themed Christmas tree. And this is where I wanted part of that decor to go. And so I, that's why I wanted the red star. I wanted it red and white. And I'm just distressing the edges a little bit. And I do this throughout the project, just so it gives it that farmhouse effect. Now I'm taking that same white chalk paint and I'm mixing a little tiny bit of acrylic blue in there to give it an icy blue color because I want this to look like a winter wonderland. And then I just kind of sponge brush that tree all over with that icy blue, just so, and so I put a little bit more into the creases where the seams are on this tree. That way it gives it kind of that 
winter wonderland, that glistening ice effect. And now I'm gonna take that caulk, and this is where I explained earlier that I'm reinforcing that star, but at the same time, I'm making it look like snow has just fallen on this tree. Maybe there was a snowstorm the night before, I don't know, but this tree is covered with snow. And so what you're gonna do is take that caulk that you get from the automotive section at the Dollar Tree, and you're gonna to wanna to go around all of the edges where the seams meet. Now, I didn't go around the edges of all of my triangles, but around the seams where all of the triangle ledges meet. And I'm just gonna put that caulk on in a thick layer right there, almost like a snow drift. And I'm going to take that fake snow and I'm gonna push it in while that caulk is still wet. So you don't wanna wait and do all of your ledges and then go back with the snow. You could, but it's gonna already have a, a layer of drying on it. So you, it's not gonna stick, that snow's not, that fake snow's not gonna stick as well. And you wanna go and just put that caulking wherever you feel like the snow would go. And I'm just trying to put it wherever I feel like if it had actually snowed on this tree, the snow would be left after maybe a morning of of melting off. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I used to drive through Oregon like all the time. I spent two years driving back and forth through Oregon and that snow is just beautiful. I mean, when it snows there, it really snows and it is just stunningly gorgeous. And some of those mornings, it looks like a crystal wonderland, not even a winter wonderland, but a crystal. I literally glistens like crystal. And what you see me doing here is just making some icicles. And the way that you do that is you just take your caulking gun there. I'm calling it a caulk gun, but it's basically tube. You take your caulking tube and you just give it a hard squeeze and you push it up on your tree there. And then you pull down. And when you pull down, you release some of the pressure until you're not squeezing anymore and it pulls that caulk into that icicle effect. Now you wanna take one of your ornaments, you get two ornaments for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and these are gorgeous ornaments. And you just wanna place him in the middle of your tree that's your triangle that's standing up. So the top of your tree, you place them in there and you just fill the bottom of that tree with snow. And you just put a little bit of caulk around his legs to keep to hold him in place and place that snow on top. I just wanted to give you an idea of where to put your trees or what you could do with this tree. This is why I'm, why I'm calling it a diorama because you could do so many things. You could put these little people on the ledges. You could take this little bench and the lights and put them on the ledges. Look how cute that is. It is such a cute little scene and you could do this all the way around the tree. The Dollar Tree just has some amazing little things that you could fill this tree with. Here I want it to look like a winter wonderland, sort of like Oregon in that glistening crystal white wonderland. And so I chose the white trees and the white ornaments and I'm just gonna use my caulk to stick them in place. And once that caulk dries, that's gonna give them a permanent hold. And I just trimming up this tree right here because I'm gonna put it on the bottom ledge, but it was a little too fat and the bottom of it was sticking off. So I'm trimming the bottom of it so I can go ahead and place that there and it'll fit. And this other ornament you see on the ledge there, which is just like the one I have at the top of the tree, I went ahead and secured him with some hot glue first and then just put the caulking around it to cover the hot glue. Now this is some Baker's twine I bought at the Dollar General, but they have the same one at the Dollar Tree. And I had some Dollar Tree Baker's twine, which I was going to use because I wanted everything on this tree to be from the Dollar Tree but I couldn't find it, of course. 
So I had this package, I think it was $5, and it had five rolls of ribbon or twine in it for wrapping. And so it was basically still a dollar for this twine. And I just wanted it, to, like I said, to match my candy cane tree. So I'm just wrapping that around each tree. I didn't glue it in place, simply because I wanted to be able to change it later on if I wanted to. Now, this is the E6000, and here's where I leave my tree overnight <laughs> because my hot glue gun is what is one of those that's cordless, and I left it off its base, and it kind of died on me. So I'm just using the E6000, and I will place my tree on its stand and let it stay overnight. And then once it dried, it turned out beautiful. And look at this. Look at this decor, you guys. This is all Dollar Tree products. This cost me under $15 for this entire project. And it looks as if I could have walked into Macy's or Gotchalks or somewhere and bought this in a high-end store. I'm saying you probably would have paid $50 or more for this project anywhere else. But if you go to the Dollar Tree and you just let your imagination go, the things you can build. Wow, I loved those projects. And I want to know what you thought about them. So leave me a comment down below and tell me what you thought of these two projects and if you're planning to recreate it or not. Because I want to see what you guys come up with. I know that it's going to be different, but it's going to be absolutely just as stunning as mine. If you haven't given me a big thumbs up for this video, please do so now, as well as hit that subscribe button and that little bell to notify you every single time I upload a new video. Once you're done with that, head on over to social media and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for some fun giveaways, as well as some behind the scenes footage. Footage. And all of those will be listed down below, those links for social media, as well as lists for all the supplies you need to recreate these projects. And with that, I'll see you next time.